Hi, my name is Steve Houston. Welcome back to my channel. If you're a current subscriber, you know what this channel is all about. We talk about IMOs. We talk about all things financial services related. We compare the IMOs. We talk about comp plan. We focus on those recruiters out there that are recruiting but not selling and things that you should be considering when you're looking for a place to hang your hat. January 2020. I hate to date the video, but this is January in 2020. Imagine being around. Some of us that are a little older than others never thought we'd be around for 2020. Uh, what a historic year for this industry and could be for you too if you just sh show up. Again, my name is Steve Houston. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, hit the like button if this video is of value to you. You can tell why we have some new thumbnails. This video is part of the Agent Success Academy training. Now, on that Agent Success Academy for 2020, we plan to go very deep on some real hands-on, the same thing we give really our own agents, which is in-depth phone coaching. We're going to talk about the in-home presentation. We're going to talk about how to dial lead. The reason for that Patreon channel is it allows us to monetize, buy more equipment. You don't have to be part of it. You can still take advantage of all the videos we put out right here on the YouTube channel. But over there, you can say thank you with a cup of coffee. As little as a dollar, you can say, hey, we like the content. We're getting some value out of it. Appreciate you doing it and keep doing it. So take a look at that. And the link to that is in my description. But if you're new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe and hit that bell. Mash that bell and it gets you instant notifications. I think, I'm pretty confident, I'm certainly hoping that you're going to like this channel and the information that's going to come out of it in 2020. So this video again is about the psychology of working a lead. A lead like this, if you're working a leads-based sales opportunity IMO, the lead is going to look like this if it's direct mail for mortgage station and final expense. It's not an internet lead, it is a direct mail lead, right? It's not Facebook, social media and that kind of stuff. Which leads you to the next point. There really are four marketing methods used for the sale of all insurance. One is television, two is radio, three is the internet, and the internet's kind of growing lately. We're doing a lot of social media, Facebook, that type of thing. Not a big fan, I like number four, which is direct mail. The direct mail pieces I just showed you is very similar to this. Most all the IMOs out there that are mailing are using something very similar to that lead, and that's what you and I are gonna be dialing on. And this is the one that I want to discuss with you today. Our agents also believe in what we call a lead supplement card or a client qualification card. And on that card, piece of paper, has some questions on it so we can pre-qualify them before you go out. And the use of these questions and the sequence of these questions are really, in my opinion, important to your success. Now, many people go out into the home, they're not pre-qualifying, they have no idea what their budget is, they have no idea what their medical issues are, and you're doing it at the kitchen table. I don't like that approach, and I don't teach that. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but I believe I want to go in there doing some pre-qualifying and know what they qualify for. So about either method that you're using, if you're asking them any questions up front, do yourself a favor, and this goes back to how to use the phone script. When you're dialing your leads, avoid what I call hard no questions. Look, it seems nice, it did to me when we first started out, to kind of take them back to when they completed the form, right? Seems like that'd be an acceptable way to remind them that uh, they filled out the form. And in your mind, you're thinking that if you remind them, they're going to say, hey, I remember that. Uh, when can you come out? I'm free this afternoon. We're still interested. <laughs> Okay, maybe might have it one or two times a year, but not very often. All right, so it's kind of a stretch, but you get the point, right? But here's the point. If you ask the question, do you remember Jack or Jill sitting in the form and they answer no, then you have another hurdle trying to convince them that you or someone in the home did fill out that form and you get the kind of that back and forth argument. They call it a scam and they're gone and you end up building some animosity, which is counterproductive to what you're trying to do, which is just book the appointment. Because getting into that debate, now you have to deal with that before you can go forward with your phone script and get back on track with setting the appointment. And I recommend you simply don't do that. Another thing you want to eliminate is what I call fail words. If someone gives you an answer the habit we can fall into is that everything the prospect answers, you get used to saying, oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Oh, that's great. And it becomes a habit. And one day someone's going to answer you when you're going through those medical questions and they're going to tell you they had a heart attack. And by habit, you're going to say, oh, that's great. Wait a minute. You guessed it. That's not going to be a great thing. And so just try to practice not doing that, not having those canned ants. And it's never a great thing to congratulate somebody or tell somebody that they had a heart attack was a good thing. So I, I just would eliminate it. Focus on not using those terminologies. You know, mix it up a little bit. 
uh, and, and just stay focused on your script. You can imagine that doesn't go very well with building up the like, know, and trust of a prospect, right? All right, what our agents do, and I recommend you do as well, is keep your phone script printed and right in front of you at all times. And get a vanilla folder for your leads, glue stick the script on the inside flap, and make sure, because this is where a lot of you trip up, is you start customizing the script or trying to make it sound more like you would say, and that's a big no-no. You don't know enough yet in this industry to start making changes to a proven script. So get yourself a vanilla folder for your leads, glue stick the script on the inside flap, and follow it exact every time you make a dial. And do not give in to the temptation, like I said, to try to change up the script. Don't change up anything if you're working a proven system that your coach has given to you, as long as the coach knows what he's talking about, actually sells some insurance himself, right? Because that derails more agents right out of the business, most likely more than anything else, is that coachability and starting to change and tweak things before you've had success using a proven system that others are currently having success with, right? Many people come in this industry having just got a license and think because the state gave them a license to learn, they can now go out and be a star with zero training or coaching and start recommending how the phone script would be so much better if it were changed as if you had all the answers, right? Remember, your script and your objection handling sheet should be right in front of you at all times. Set yourself up for success. This helps keep you on track. It's also a reminder that our only goal is to book an appointment. It's not to answer a bunch of questions, and it's certainly not to make a friend. Put this in your mind. A bored dental assistant in the office scheduling appointments with a doctor is the exact picture you should have in mind here. And the reason why that's such a good example or a good vision for you to have in your head is because if I were on the phone, you were trying to book an appointment with me and you were calling from the dental office and I said, hey, uh, you know, what's the procedure for, a, uh, for an extraction? She wouldn't have a clue. She's not the dentist, right? Very good point there because when somebody starts asking you questions about what's the cost or hey, can you cover this? Can you cover that? Remember, take your insurance agent license hat off your head and put on the appointment setter hat. You don't know anything. You're simply booking the appointment. Very, very key point here. I know some of you aren't listening to me and you're going to do it your way anyway and you're not going to succeed by doing it that way. The idea, again, remember, in working leads is the psychology of how you work the leads is your role here is to book an appointment. It's not to make a friend and it's not to be friendly. It's to get to the point, get your information, book the appointment, lock it down, and show up. Realtors, I'm especially talking to you. Your challenge is you're way too bubbly. In order to be a success here, you're going to have to take that realtor hat off and stop being so bubbly. Again, you can do that in the home, on the phone. You're a bored dental assistant booking an appointment for the doctor. And last, here's a picture you would all be better off having in your head. The movie Pursuit of Happiness, where he was not allowed to put the phone down, just had one finger on the hang-up button and dialed the next number and launched into his phone script when they answered. I hope this helps you understand the psychology of working a lead in this industry. If you like the videos I said, give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. I would love to have you a part of the channel. Go check out the Patreon channel. More in-depth training. You can press your learning curve and find your success in this industry. Those of you who are with an IMO that is providing you zero support, coaching, or mentoring on the tools and skills needed to make it in this industry, we can help you. That's really the purpose of that Patreon channel. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.